So in this video, we're looking at the Dynamics Nav Content Pack for Power BI that Microsoft provide. Okay, so hi. Uh, right, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you now how to connect to the Dynamics Nav Content Pack that Microsoft have uh, set up for uh, Nav 2016 and 2017. Okay, the first thing obviously you need to ensure is that you have a Power BI account, and we have ours open here. The second thing you need to ensure before you can start using this content pack is that you've got a nav configured correctly. So if we just go to our nav administration tool first, okay, we're going to use the unsecure instance here. Now the reason why we're using the unsecure instance is because this is a demo machine and uh, the instance has got no uh, uh, certificate set up for it so SSL is not enabled on this instance now if um, you did want to uh, secure the service using an SSL certificate the best option is to go and buy yourself a public certificate that you can then use you cannot use a self-signed certificate to connect to Power BI okay so the first thing you need to ensure is if you go into the configuration of your instance have a look under OData right here and you need to ensure that OData services have been enabled. As you can see here, it's been enabled. If it isn't enabled, you need to check that box and then say, first of all, you need to edit, check the box and then save. Okay. You should see a message up bit. Well, obviously this hasn't changed, so you're not getting it. Normally you would get a message here saying you need to restart the service before you can use this new setting. So if it hasn't been already, check, check it, save the settings, and then restart the instance. So if you go in here, you can right click and restart. Okay, so for our instance, everything's been set up so far. The next thing you need to ensure that all the queries that or all the OData services that the Microsoft Content Pack uses are working within your nav um, setup here. If they're not working, then the Content Pack will not work. Okay, so let's go into nav and have a look at the web services. Okay, so there are a number of services that the uh, Content Pack actually uses. We've got quite a few here that we use for our own demos. So the, the Content Pack uses the um, item sales and profit queries. If we just have a look and find them here, let's have, put them into, there we go. So that one there, it also uses the item sales by customer. It uses the Power BI Finance, which is here. It uses the sales dashboard, sales opportunities, sales orders by salesperson. So those are all down here. There we go. Uh, and finally, it also uses the top customer overview, which is there. So the first thing to do is to make sure that all these particular services or queries or pages have been exposed to OData and these options have been checked. So you've published these particular queries or pages for OData services. So each one individually must appear in this list to be available. To Absolutely. Public. And all these boxes for the publish option here needs to be ticked. Okay. That means it's, and, and this URL is actually populated. So you know then that is available. Okay, so to check one of these, for instance, let's say, um, let's say for instance, the KBI one, this Power BI Finance, if you right click there and say copy cell, or you can go directly to the browser if you just open up a browser page, paste that in there. Okay, we're gonna log in. Okay, so you can see that that OData service is open and the data is there. Okay, it's working fine. Now, what you may find is by default, some of these 
aren't actually functioning as they should. So really, in a way, a way to test this, to make sure that all your queries and your pages are available properly, is to go into your development environment, okay, and find the relevant pages and queries and run them from there. So one of the main ones I find uh, when setting up the Microsoft Content Pack is actually the Power BI Finance service. So if you have a look at this, that is page 197. Go into your development environment, go to pages, go to 197. Okay, there it is, all right? And run that to make sure that it's actually returning some values and you know it's actually returning a table which is populated so if we're here here we go it's opening it there we can see that, that that's fine okay the only problem uh, what you will come across occasionally if you've set up a, a, a clean gb version um i've often come across a situation where a customer might say that they're having problems setting up the content pack and this normally occurs with the gb version and you find that the reason why it fails is because this particular page fails and it's because you haven't set up your accounting periods so you need to go into table 50 and set up your accounting periods before you can continue with this so, assuming that all our queries are all working fine, okay, and all of our, all the queries and the pages that are relevant to this content pack have been published, which is great, and we can see that they all have, plus more we have here, we can now go and connect to the content pack. So, if we go back to Power BI, in Power BI online service here, we've logged in, we're going to get some data, get a service. We're going to search for nav. Okay, and there is the content pack. Click on get. Okay, now so here we're going to paste in the URL for our OData service. So let me just get that. For our demo, we have our OData service. Click next. We're going to sign in with basic authentication and we're going to enter our details. Okay, so it's importing the data, it's importing all the reports that come as default with this content pack. So, one of the things you need to note is that your OData service needs to be exposed externally. So you should be able to access it from wherever you are, not just your internal network. If it isn't exposed, then the other way around it is to use your enterprise gateway and add it as a source in your enterprise gateway and you might be able to use it that way around. In our demo, our service has been exposed, so that's why we are able to connect. Now, the other thing that you would probably want to do is set up a schedule refresh because obviously the only point of having these reports is so that you get the latest information. Now, if you click on the uh, dot, dot, dot next to the data set there, you can say schedule refresh. Okay, and uh, just to ensure that everything else is fine, um, you, if, if your credentials were not up to date, you'd have a little uh, warning sign there. You can go on schedule refresh, click yes. So you can say by default when you uh, connect to the content pack, it automatically sets up a schedule refresh for you. So it's all automatically done it. It will do it once um, a night between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. If it fails, it will try again, but with the free version of Power BI, you can only refresh your data once a day. With the pro version, you can actually refresh it up to eight times a day and every hour, but only up to eight times a day. Okay, so once you've got this all set up, you will find that your data will always be up to date. And then you can start to share this these reports and dashboards with other users in the company. So you can see here, it's uh, showing all your default reports. And if you click on the uh, bit there, you can see the data set, okay, and the reports, which are these here. 
and then you can start creating dashboards from these reports. Okay, so as part of this content pack, Microsoft also provide you with a, a default dashboard as well. Okay, so if we have a look at this, basically this dashboard is a combination of tiles from the various reports that they have provided here in the report section for you. You can create your own dashboard. So say if you wanted to create your own dashboard, you can just pin a tile here and say new dashboard and say demo, pin, and you can see we've created a new dashboard. Okay, that dashboard has just got that particular tile as part of it. If you wanted to add another tile to it, you can go to any one of your pages in the report, select a tile, let's say this one, pin it to demo dashboard. And if you have a look at your dashboard, you have two tiles on your dashboard. One other interesting thing that you can do is if you go to uh, reports again, and say if um, you actually, uh, let's have a look at the sales dashboard there. Okay, you like this whole thing because you can't actually pin um, filters to your dashboard. But what you can do is you can pin this whole page into a dashboard. So if you click on pin live page. So all the components will be kept together. Absolutely, it's a new dashboard. Let's say demo, oops, demo one. In live, if you go in there, you find that your whole page has been pinned, so it comes along with all the filters as well. Great, that's really good. Yeah, now obviously, once you've created these wonderful dashboards, you want to be able to share them. So, you want to share this dashboard, you can share it with any other user within your organization. Click on the share button, enter the email addresses. So and share and I will get an email to say um, George has shared this dashboard with you so when I open my Power BI account I will see the dashboard in my dashboards so we have to choose to share with them they can't yes. request in no, the other direction no the only other way of sharing dashboards is if you create the dashboard within a specific workspace and that workspace has been shared between numerous people. So uh, you create the workspace and you add members to that workspace and then you create dashboards and you save them within that workspace then those people will automatically see them. So at the moment you're working in your workspace. Yes. My workspace. So within one company, mm -hmm. I'd set, I'd pull this content pack down, I would set things up for myself and then share those dashboards with others. Yeah. So they, they wouldn't have any need to do the setup we've just done. No, no, because you know, you don't want everyone to uh, waste time creating yeah. these wonderful, you, one person's going to sit there, create these wonderful dashboards and set, uh, share them with the top level people who just want to see the reports. And if in their nav, they've got other queries they want to expose, basically the same process, they expose the query as a web service. Yes, so basically what we've shown here is the Microsoft Content Pack, where by default, when you install nav, these queries are already exposed, uh, and the pages are already exposed to OData. Uh, if you wanted to create your own custom reports then, uh, and your own custom queries, what you would do is you'd go into your development environment, you would create um, your own queries, which we have done ourselves here, if you can have a look. We've got a number of queries that we've created. Uh, so there's a, a query there just for item, where we're uh, you know, exposing certain information about items, like item number, item name, and so on. And then what you can do is you can go into nav. So if we go into nav and go into services here, you can see here we've exposed that particular query as an OData service as well. And then you can use that. It's just opening that in the browser. You can use that URL as a data source in Power BI Desktop, okay? You cannot access that data, this particular URL directly in Power BI Online. You need to connect to it in the desktop, 
You can create your data set there. You can manipulate the data as you wanted. You could create reports from it if you wanted to. Once you've done that, you can then publish it to your Power BI online service. And then you would see your own. If we just go back to our Power BI, you would see it within your own data set there. So whatever you've called it, items, whatever, you would see it there. You'd see the reports if you've created some in there as well. But also once you've created your data set here, once it's uploaded, published, you can create your own reports. And then share those. The Absolutely, you can create your own reports here. So you don't necessarily need to create the reports in the desktop. You can create them on in the Power BI online service. So for instance, here, we've got the, the Microsoft uh, Dynamics now data set there. If we wanted to create a simple um, report, let's say a, a bar chart or something like that, a number, profit. So we've got a simple matrix there. Let's just uh, create a bar chart out of it. There we go, yeah. And we've created a simple report. We're going to now save that report. We're gonna call it, I don't know, item profits or something like that. Save that. So we've created our own little report there. And then once if you look at that, you can then use that particular report in a, a dashboard. So let's say pin it. We can pin it to our demo, let's say to our demo dashboard there. Okay, so you can see your profit there. So yeah, you can create all kinds of queries within the development environment if you have access to the development environment and you can expose them uh, to OData and then use them as a source in Power BI Desktop and then publish them to Power BI Online. That's brilliant, thank you. Pleasure.